When I think about jobs crisis, I think of the 830 million people in sub-Saharan Africa that will join the workforce between now and 2050. In a situation where there's already very large numbers unemployed in this region, there is going to be a huge need for new jobs um, for this massive expanding workforce. On top of that, 75% of those that are already employed um, are employed in what we call vulnerable jobs. They are involved in unpaid family work or they work for themselves. So not only do we need a lot more jobs, we also need good jobs. My research looks at the allocation of resources within sectors, but also between sectors. When we look at the East Asian growth miracle, that was fueled by growth in the manufacturing sector. And growth in general involves a shift of resources from low productivity to high productivity sectors. In Sub-Saharan Africa, we don't see this. We see very little manufacturing, only about 10% of employment is in the manufacturing sector. So what my research looks at is why there is such little industry in Africa. And in so doing, what we try to do is come up with a set of policy recommendations, a set of new industrial policy framework um, in order to address this lack of manufacturing sector. When we look at the key constraints to the development of the manufacturing sector, what we find is that in sub-Saharan Africa there's a lack of firm capabilities. What this comes down to is on the one hand management capabilities to manage large size firms, also worker capabilities and the, and the skills necessary to engage with the manufacturing sector. And one of the big notable gaps in sub-Saharan Africa is a lack of firm-to-firm -firm linkages where most of the learning occurs um, in terms of developing firm capabilities. One of the benefits from foreign direct investment is that there are spillovers to the local economy. This means that there are domestic producers that supply inputs to the foreign firms and also domestic customers that can buy inputs from foreign firms. In sub-Saharan Africa, we find that this domestic linkages don't happen. So foreign firms import all of their inputs and export all of their output with no linkages to the, to the domestic economy. And that's one area where there could be productivity spillovers um, in the future. Another area where there can be significant productivity gains is through exporting. So firms that enter into export markets learn from exporting, particularly when they export to high income countries and particularly when they export more complex products. In Sub-Saharan Africa, what we find is that very few firms enter into export markets and those that do are not exporting to high-income countries and they're not ex exporting sophisticated products. So this is one particular area where there could be huge productivity gains in the future and also where there could be a lot of job creation. The policy lesson from all of, the, all of this is that there is no silver bullet. But if I'm pressed on it, the most important thing is investment in infrastructure. This will have the short-term benefit of creating jobs but over the longer term, it'll allow and create an environment for firm-to-firm -firm linkages to develop, and this will lead to productivity spillovers and lead to an emerging industrial sector. This is going to be essential if we're going to address the impending job crisis that is about to hit Sub-Saharan Africa.